उसका खाना वाले बता रहे थे जब शादी भी होती है ना तो रजिस्टर यहीं पे आगे करते हैं और जो पीस प्राइस होता है ना वो यहाँ मिलता है नोबल पीस प्राइस हाँ मलाला को नोबल पीस सेंटर है ना ये मलाला यूसफ से यहीं आई होगी लेने के लिए ये वाला यहाँ हम बैठ के कल फ्राइज खा रहे थे ना happen please stay calm and listen to the instructions of the captain and the crew we have a bar on board where we sell refreshments which you can enjoy while experiencing Oslo from the fjord if you have any questions please do not hesitate to ask the crew they will be happy to assist you Akershus was originally built as a medieval castle in the year 1299 under King Håkon V of Norway. Then in the 17th century, the fortress was rebuilt by King Christian IV of Denmark and Norway. He turned Akershus into a Renaissance castle and he gave it the appearance it still has today. The outdoor areas of the fortress are open to the public free of charge. And you can also find the Museum of Armed Forces, as well as the Norwegian Resistance Museum here. <laughs> then it's possible to have something small to eat from the bar. And of course the bar can offer you all kinds of drinks, wine, beer, soft drinks, whatever you like. Please uh, do feel free to move around the boat and if you like to take some pictures, there's a nice little on the boat.
sailing in is called Björvika. This is where Oslo was originally founded around the year 1000 AD. Today you can find medieval ruins, the Oslo Central Station, as well as the Oslo Opera House in this area. The area has been transformed over the past couple of decades by the Fjord City Project, an urban renewal project for the center of Oslo that aims to open up the waterfront and relocate harbor activity and large roads to make the areas along the fjord more accessible to Oslo's inhabitants and visitors. The high-rise buildings behind the opera are part of the Fjord City project and are called the bar code. The modern building next to the opera house is Oslo's new main public library, Dijkman Björvika. The library relocated to this brand new facility in 2020. The unique building is designed by the Oslo-based architectural firms Lundhagen and Atelier Oslo and is easily identifiable by its cantilevered top floor, providing a unique architectural feature that also preserves the sightline between the central station and the opera house. The library provides access to well-equipped makerspaces, radio studios, events, lectures, meeting rooms, exhibitions, and a huge collection of books, films, music recordings, and other media, all free of charge for everyone. The top floors also offer a magnificent view of the Oslo Fjord and the Opera House. The Opera House of Oslo opened in April 2008 and was designed by the Norwegian architecture company Snøhetta, whose offices we just passed. The opera has been built to look like a glacier and the main construction material is Italian Carrara marble. The roof is open to the public and taking a walk on top of the building has become a popular activity. It is also possible to take a guided tour through some of the opera's 1,100 rooms, eat at one of its two restaurants, and of course to attend its shows and concerts. The sculpture in the water is called She Lies, and it's a public sculpture by Monica Bonvicini, made of stainless steel and glass panels. It is a permanent installation, floating on the water in the fjord on a concrete platform, 12 meters or 39 feet above the water surface. The sculpture turns on its axis in line with the tide and wind, offering changing experiences through reflections from the water and its transparent surfaces. It's said that the Norwegian painter Edvard Munch was inspired to paint his famous painting The Scream, walking along a path on the Ekberg Hill. On the hillside behind the navigation school, you can find the Ekberg Sculpture Park. It is free for the public and open 24 hours a day. In the same location, you can also find the Ekberg Restaurant. The first restaurant was built in 1916. You can enjoy a breathtaking panoramic view of Oslo from the current restaurant. To reach this area, take tram 18 or 19.
These monks lived according to a special rule, where they had to get up with the sunrise in the morning and go to bed with the sunset at night. But in the land of the midnight sun, with very long summer days and long winter nights, this rule posed a problem. The monks ended up sleeping all winter and staying awake all summer. The red wooden house down by the water is called Gessholmen. This was the location of Oslo's first airport. As you can imagine from the shape and size of the island, it was not a regular airport but rather a seaplane base. This was the only airport in Oslo between 1927 and 1939. The white building, which resembles a church, is Hickholmen Fjord, the oldest lighthouse in the inner Oslo fjord. It was built already in 1827 and is still in use as a lighthouse today. <laughs>
Two small islands with several houses on the right side of the boat are called Fossolmana. This name was given back in 1954 when fresh water was found on both islands. This was a rarity on islands of such a small size. On the outer island there is a sanctuary for rare seabirds, which come here for nesting. On the inner island, closest to the boat, you can see several houses. Despite the fact that there are no public piers or means of public transportation, there are several families who live here all year, even during winter. Other families only have their summer houses here.
कुछ फैमिली परमानेंट रहती हैं कुछ केवल केशन आते हैं। कुछ फैमिली परमानेंट रहती हैं कुछ केवल केशन आते then moved north and further away from the city centre to today's airport, Gardamon. Since this relocation, the area has changed a lot. Apartments, offices, parks and even a beach have been built here. The white building with a modern shape is the Oslo office of the Norwegian petroleum and wind energy company Equinu, formerly known as Statoil. The building was the result of an open competition in 2008 and opened in 2012. You can also see the indoor Telenor Arena from here. The arena is multi-purpose and can host both sports events and concerts. It was the location of the 2010 Eurovision Song Contest. adventurer Thor Heyerdahl and his expeditions. In the middle of Bigby, you can also find the Norwegian Folk Museum, a large open-air cultural heritage museum, and right next to it, the Viking Ship Museum, which houses three original Viking ships from the 9th century. leisure boats close to Oslo. The two buildings guarding the entrance to the bay are called the King and the Queen. They have offices and they're also available to rent for private parties. A small castle on the hill called Oskarshall 
is used by the royal family, but is also open to the public in the summertime. It was built around 1850 as a summer residence for King Oscar I of Sweden and Norway. On the opposite side of the bay is the terminal for the Color Line car and passenger ferries, which run every day between Oslo and Kiel in northern Germany. The two Color Line ferries transport more than one million passengers between Oslo and Kiel every year.